if they're lying to you. Hey, it's Mike. Sold religion dystopia, a world full of lies. Chapter 1 of James. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Hmm. I like a hair or something. My nose is driving nuts. <clears throat> if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unsuitable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower that thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. Perisheth it. <laughs> so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away out of his, out of his own lust and enticed. That's true. <clears throat> then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth seed, and, or sin, excuse me, <laughs> and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights. <laughs> the Father of lights. <clears throat> Which is very interesting. That would be, physically, that would be the sun, wouldn't it, to you? With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Hmm. Of his own will he begot us with the word of truth, that he should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. It's interesting that it, it, it was a description of those couple of verses of the sun. Whether my beloved brethren, uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You guys, you people that are working out this scamdemic, this uh, eugenics program, this democide program. Whereof lay apart all filthiness and superfluity fluity of nuttiness, and receive with meekness the engraft word, which is able to save your souls. Engrafted word. 
but be ye doer uh, doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass hmm huh. for he for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and to continueth therein he being not a forgotten hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed if any man among you seems to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man this man's religion is vain Pure religion undefiled before God and Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows and their afflictions, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Which is interesting about this widows and the fatherless, because remember these people were getting were being killed, persecuted, terribly, murdered and tortured and everything by the Israelites, by the Jews. And if they did, didn't do it, uh, then the Rome is right there behind them to, to, to do it. So, <laughs> my brethren, have, so you know, you, you see why they would be visiting the orphans and the, and the widowless and the fatherless and the widows, because people are getting killed for believing in Jesus. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto you assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, there come and also a poor man in vile raiment. And if, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing and say unto him sit thou here in the good place and say to the poor stand thou there and sit here under my footstool are ye not then particular or partial in yourselves so are ye not partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor, and do not rich men oppress you, and draw you before the judgment seats? Yeah, they sure to hell do. Look what we're going through now, folks, with all this insanity. Where did I, yeah, sorry about this, I just lost myself. Uh, okay, seven. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself ye do well but if ye have respect of two persons ye commit sin and are convinced of the law of transg of transgressors for whosoever shall keep the uh, the whole law yet offend in one point his he is guilty of all for he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet thou kill, thou art being a, become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and do so, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty.
For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doeth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, and be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doeth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath no works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up on, upon, the author, upon the altar? Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed upon him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. And it's interesting in this whole context. You gotta remember this is during this time period when they were immensely, incredibly being persecuted by uh, the synagogue of Satan, the, ru the ruling class of the Jewish Empire, the Israeli Empire. I mean, people don't understand the magnitude of this, uh, what we, you know, what happened when the Messiah showed up and the things were changed. And people started sharing this because, you know, what it means is that there's no longer need for any of the leadership. The religious leadership, they had a theocracy back then. It was a terrible, you know, authoritarian, totalitarian system. Of abuse because evil men rose to the top became the priests and they did it for money for power and and also prestige then there's the genealogy what we still see going on today with the elite the ruling elite whatever they want to be called so enlightened are they and so you know I mean, it was, a, it was a very difficult thing. Just imagine the, how much balls you had to have to be an apostle or disciple of Jesus Christ back then. And, and just imagine what kind of conviction you must have needed to do what they did. Because the easy thing to do is just, go oh, like 99.9% .9 of them did. Oh, thanks, I'm going on my way. problem is none of us have our way either somebody's just stirring us and guiding us either this beast system controlled by the synagogue of satan and the luciferians of this world or god almighty and i tell you what either way you got to put a lot of work into it most people don't realize then you know because they've been so conditioned how much work they actually put into the system this beast system and if you say, oh, I'm not, I don't agree with it. I don't believe in it. No, I don't accept it. Yeah, but you're still so ingrained. It's so ingrained in you, so indoctrinated. How the hell do you think you're going to break away from this? I 
I think there's only one way that anything's going to change for the better, folks. It's Jesus. Jesus plus nothing. That means you get, we do have to still believe in God. We have to stop the religious thing. And you stop the religious thing, that, that all influences the political thing. And you also got to stop the this whole usury system. This is a terrible system. That This banking system is absolutely terrible. That enslaves too many people. Where do we get it? Where do we get the balls like they had back then? The, you know, this courage that they had back then. That first century, you know, Jesus generation. They're, of course, they saw amazing miracles. Amazing, 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 amazing miracles. And most people can't even comprehend. But it must have been something pretty impressive to cause men to sacrifice everything knowing full well that there were people all around them ready to kill them at any moment and would be justified based on their religious faith. I don't think people understand fully the magnitude of this message. I think this is why it's so important to be reading this right now with all the negativity that's going on. And anybody's been paying attention to what's going on with the uh, mask rituals and the 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 pushing of the poisonous cup and the poignard and uh, a volunteer eugenics program and uh, this whole crony baloney nonsense. Clearly, we're under a, a new form of warfare where the those who feel like they have the Right and justification are going again at, at us. We the people again. What do we the people have to defend us greater than God Himself? I don't think we have anything greater than God Himself. God help us. Yeshua yeah, the Messiah, please help us. My brethren, be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation for in many things we offend all if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body behold we put bits in the horses mouths that they may obey us we turn about their whole body behold also the ships which though they be so great and do and are driven of fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listens listens huh the governor even so, the tongue of the little members and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. The tongue is a fire. The world is uh, the world, uh, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among other members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire a course of nature, and it sets on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of the serpents and of the things in the seas is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of dead poison, deadly poison. That's for sure. Isn't that amazing that it is so profoundly true, isn't it? We think we know so much and we know so little. It doesn't matter who you are and what position you are. We're stupid as hell and we do stupid things all day long to please men instead of God. It's crazy. See, there's how the tongue goes. Uh, therewith bless we God, even the Father, Therewith curse we men 
which are made after the similitude of God. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So we curse our fellow brothers and sisters who are all created in God's image. Isn't that crazy? Out of the same mouth proceed the blessings and cursings. My brethren, this things, these things ought not so to be. Death, a fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter. Can the, the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either uh, a vine or figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endues with endowed with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and with, uh, of wisdom. And, you know, there are some pretty good teachers out there. There's some pretty nice people out there, too, who try to do the right thing. I imagine they run across a person like me and it's probably disappointing. <laughs> Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not, descendeth not from above, yet is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For were Envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So when there's envying and strifing, there is confusion and there's every evil work. And I think we're witnessing this right now from 2020, 2021. The degree in which people are willing to do what they need to do with their evil works. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye, have, ye ask not. Well, Lord God Almighty, Yeshua, the Messiah, <clears throat> I ask you that you stop all this nonsense, all this evil that's going on with the with the, the poisonous uh, dagger and cup, that are pointing and poking in people's arms. Stop with the madness. I ask you to stop with the madness about the you know, defaming you with a mask. And I ask you to all those who are trying to cause such pain and suffering for their own wisdom that they would uh, have whatever they're doing to us seven times fold, uh, 70 times seven fold, that they may wake up and know who you are. And you know who was guilty, God. We're all guilty of something. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy to God. Do ye think that the scriptures say, saith in vain, 
the spirit that dwells in us lusts lusts to envy but he giveth more grace wherefore he saith god resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble submit yourself therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you draw nigh to god and he will draw nigh to you cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts and ye, ye double minded be afflicted and mourn when weep let the laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to ha heaviness heaviness humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up speak not evil one of uh, to one of another brethren He's talking about the people now, once again. His people, the people, the followers of Jesus, the few, their congregation, the people that believed. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judges the law. But if the, the, thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judges another? Go to go to now, ye that say today and to morrow we shall go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Where is ye know not what shall be on the morrow? For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Vanisheth. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Now, but now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, doeth not good. To him it is sin. Now it's chapter 5 of James. Go to now, ye rich men, and weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. This is a big warning here. You riches are your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Huh, isn't that interesting? How does they rust? And like something is mixed with it, like it's a fake. And shall eat your own flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasures together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud and crieth and cries of them which have reaped are entered <laughs> entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton you have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter hmm. ye have condemned ye are, you have condemned and killed the just and he doth not resist you be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Because they're expecting him to come then. So it says, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, hath long patience for it, until he receives the early and latter rain. Be ye also faithful, establish in your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draw nine. 
So this is a message that James gave to the to members of those who had abiding faith in Jesus, surrounded by the hordes and armies of the world, hating God and hating them, and there was murder. They're being murdered and tortured and raped and pillaged by the uh, the Israelites and the, and even the Romans. And he's telling these folks, just be patient. Jesus is coming back. The, the, for the coming of the Lord draws nine. That's near. Now. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye, have, yes, ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Are you another uh, symbolic reference to he's coming soon he's right there he's coming it's coming folks so this is real this particular letter or whatever it is is was written just prior to the destruction of jerusalem it's not written to you and i this is written to the members the congregation the disciples then More evidence that God, Lord Jesus Christ, that can come and already happen. This is good. This is a positive thing for all of us who have abiding faith in it. And those who don't have abiding faith in what Jesus said, but say they believe in Jesus, are waiting for the second coming to happen. I know that's harsh, but this is the truth. And how is anything going to change? If you're not following God, or at least accepting who He is literally, take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of the suffering, affliction, and patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure, and have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and tend and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay be yea, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And pray of faith. And prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise shall raise him up and if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth and by the space of three years and six months. Very much. So the same thing's going to happen here, folks. We're just about ready to get into that three years and six month period of the last days, which happened back then, the end of that era. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, one convert him. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. And so we read here once again another book with the reference and expectations. Right? Yes. We did about when you know God's coming. He's saying here that the judge standeth before the door. 
Uh, be patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draw nine. And uh, there's another one, right? There's that one, but I don't want to use that one. Give us uh do, 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 do. We have heaped treasures together for the last days. So here we go. There's we keeped up treasure for the last days. Um Uh, to wait and patient for precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain. Uh, be they patient for the coming of the Lord draws nine. Then it says here, Judge standeth before the door. So, uh, pretty clear reference to the fact of the expectation of what they have, their expectation, which. is that there would be a second coming in their time period. Did Jesus come back then? What are you going to do about it if you're a Christian? Are you going to believe his word or not? I mean, where do you go? I mean, if you can't even believe that he, already did, he did what he said he did, then how can you say you're a follower of him? It's harsh teaching, I know... I'm not really judging you. The words themselves are judging you. I'm just reading the words. Judge me harsh too. I, I didn't like it. Because I didn't understand the positive. Why it was positive. I was just thinking the, the fleshly about we, the whole thing about the second coming is, oh no, you're, why should we believe then? Look at how terrible and evil it is. It is terrible and evil here. Apparently it's going to always be terrible and evil here as long as humans are here. And the demonic realm that surrounds us. But we have a way out of this whole mess. It's an abiding faith in Jesus. And read this book. Jesus already came back. And we need to learn to appreciate that.